all I see are the bright searching lights, but in my heart I only see darkness. Men around me ache for death, and the smell of it becomes stronger. My birthday is sometime this week, but I don't know when. No one has recollection of time. Days seem years, minutes, hours. Men who, men who see more skeleton than human curse at God. Curse at our captors, curse at life that has damned them. Children that are care in the world are now sealed in a shut vault as the screams of naked bodies fall over them. Hope was the only thing that has kept us alive, but now hope itself is hard to find under the thick black smoke that comes from the chimneys. We hunger together in a bitter silence. We don't know who barks flowers, the dogs or our captors. I look at the blank stares on victims' faces. At least their suffering is over. The only thing that has a warm bed are the lice. I dream of what life used to be, then the screams of dying mothers, dying fathers, dying friends wake me up. But I can't help them. No one can. I am trapped like them. You can smell the decaying corpses of bodies, piled as high as the camp itself. Even when I sleep, I can't escape hell. I only hear the horrors of little children yelling as the doors are sealed and they cling to their mothers. But no one can be saved. It's too late. Even if freedom comes, I am already dead. January 30th, 1933, Adolf Hitler becomes the leader of Germany, home to over 500,000 Jews. September 15th, 1935, Germany announces the Nuremberg Laws that prohibit Jews from working in government positions. Similarly, Jews were no longer considered citizens of Germany. July 1930, 32 countries from around the world meet in Evian, and France to discuss the idea of helping the Jews flee from Nazi Germany. No country agrees to take in Jewish refugees. November 9th to 10th, 1938, Kristallnacht. Under orders from Hitler and Nazi leaders, mob violence broke out in Germany, Austria, and Nazi-occupied territories against the Jews. 7,500 Jewish businesses were destroyed. 267 synagogues were burned. 91 Jews killed. September 1st, 1939, German faith Poland holds over 3 million Jews. October 1940, creation of the Warsaw Ghetto. Over 400,000 Jews would live in the small section of the Polish capital. January 20th, 1942. Meeting Nazi figures meet at the Wanzi Conference and decide on the final solution of the Jews. 1942. Transports to Auschwitz begin. Over 1 million Jews to Auschwitz. April 1943. Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. Without an army or proper weapons, Jews briefly mounted an attack against the Nazis for nearly a month. January 27, 1945, Auschwitz is liberated by the Soviet Union. Even though the Jewish people were systematically rounded up, relocated to the concentration and war camps, and millions were exterminated in the final solution. Hours of the story of survival. Of strength in the face of weakness. Of determination in the face of doubt. Of hope in the face of seeming hopelessness. We are not just the people of the book. We are our culture, our religion, our history, history. a tradition, a future. Today we celebrate the heroism and the card. And and the bravery of Lola Lieber, Martin Honing, Joseph Kushner, Ellie Rizal, Vlad Gavin, Victor Lewis, Paula Kastaba, Bernie Najma, Anne Frank, Jack Rose, Arthur Schneider, Joseph Schumacher, Josie Adler, Charlotte Gustman, Opperman, Issa, and Mimi Freeman. Charles Goldner, Shraga Feifel, Frida Weiss, Jolie Adler, Solomon Uganti, Gaston Silvera, Alina Goldstein, Franco, and Hershel Prince. Sonny Siegel, Leah Kaufman, David Gorak, Bola Prince, Joe Halpern, Ernst Nibershaw, Selena Lyman, Esther Lefte, Simon Lewis. Yanko Kemper, Rochelle Kojek, Zoltan Kalvary, Renata Lankonik, and Hilfast and Kaufman, Joseph Bow, Victor Lewis, Irvin Eisner. <coughs> 
Alicia Ackerman Sherman, Isidore Halpin, Hannah Cullen, Eleanor Friedman, Jack Nichols. Julia Cullen, Marcus Greenwald, Christine Marcus Cullen, Jeff moment you're about to hear the stories behind those names that were just mentioned. Um, as you leave, the boys will leave from, from the, the door where Rabbi Mantra will be standing, and the girls will be leaving from the door where, where, Mrs. T where Mrs. Wasserman is standing. They'll be leaving from there. Um, as you leave, you'll receive a card. The card will tell you which room to go to. Please follow these instructions, head to the room to find out more behind the of the stories behind these people's names. I was born in Brussels, Belgium on March 21st, 1939. Josie lived with her mother and her father. She was an only child. She was three years old when the Holocaust started. Her mother was a clothing designer for the Royal House of Belgium and her father was a tailor. Since Josie Tran was so young, her only memory before the war was getting taken away to hide by two Jewish ladies, other known as nuns. Belgium was liberated in 1945 by the Russians. After the war, Josie Tran battled with her parents and moved to America. She's now a tour guide in the Washington Holocaust Museum. Josie Tran's whole family survived the war. During the war, Josie hid in the Christian Covenant, which was too nonsense to her as a child. And there, they got into the marriage. Joseph Bell's art skills saved him from perishing along with the others. For example, Joseph wrote in his diary, Dear Diary, I worked as a draftsman in the, co in the construction office. One day, the Nazi supervisor ordered me to make a sunprint out of one of the drawings. In Belgium in 1940, Dora and Slomo Jarbom knew they needed to get out. They heard about boats leaving from Dunkirk, France to the United States. Along with their daughter, Maria, and my grandmother, who was very young at the time, they made their way to Dunkirk from their hometown, Antwerp, Belgium. When they arrived to the dock in Dunkirk, they were told that the boat was only taking soldiers and they couldn't get off. They then decided to go to Portugal and catch a boat to the United States from there. On foot, the family made their way on the back roads of France with the young daughter to Portugal. At one point during their journey, they were gassed or starved. In the end, it's the determination of the human spirit and the will to go on that is the true survivor. During this election, Jack and his family were all sent to the left to die. Jack, getting this from a Nazi official, showed this to one of the guards saying that he could work. He was then sent to the right to live in a concentration camp. My great grandmother, Jolie Adler, was born on October 21st, 1922. She was born in a place called Kosais in Czechoslovakia. She had a job, although she had no schooling. Her and her family were not so much involved in Jews before the Holocaust started. After the Holocaust, Julie returned from the small town she lived in to survive with her brother, Joe Adler, who was liberated from New Charkleven in December of 19... I think they gave him birthday, I'm not sure. Again, they, adoption birthday? Yeah, something like that. I'm not sure exactly how that worked. And when he came, so they gave him a name and he was living with the family. Oh, and so then when he came to the U.S., he changed his name again. They changed his name for him because it was an unimaginable name. Mm. So yeah, this is a picture from leaving through the fence. The ghetto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Two sons, or two brothers, to the Bronx, to set up a home, and they started living there. 
Selma and her two parents stayed in Germany for a little while. Then they realized how bad it was getting that they should leave too. So they went to Israel. They stayed in Israel for a couple of months. And then their brother sent them a letter saying that they should come to the U.S. and it was all safe there. So they took, they remember bringing pots and pans that they have here with them to the U.S. And then they lived in the U.S. They had many kids there. They saw they huge families. Oh. So that's the original pot that she brought? Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> we do have it, do. but it's too bad. Sure, sure. Okay. Okay. So, my first friend's name is Rachel Ojek. Um, on March 5th, she had snuck off with her friend at Childa when they when the rest of when the SS came to her house and they were deported, when the rest of the, the rest of her family was deported. Her friend's family, Achilda's family, um, took in Rachel as though it was her own um, daughter and they bleached her hair to make it look blonde and she already had blue eyes so she was able to get fake papers that she was an Iranian and she wasn't actually a Jew. Um, she had this little teddy bear that she had with her mother sitting on it that she would always have with her. That and she, when she was there, she, when she was in hiding, she didn't really have a lot to do because she couldn't really just go out and out. So she would sketch and paint a lot. So here's a picture of what something she would have, could have drawn of her hiding place, which is underneath the toy box. The toy box had two fail bottoms. The first one was like around here, and underneath that they had like fake money, so that they would think that oh, they were just hiding their money if the burglars were coming. But they never figured out that underneath it there was this little dug hole in the ground where she would stay. Um, she lived with them for three years, and once the war was over, she went looking for anyone from her family who was still alive. She had two brothers and um, great great aunt, great uncle, and my mom's cousins. When was it? Do you know when this picture was taken? I believe it's his brother's one. Our people. So we are the shoulders upon which our future lies. We must be united for all the Jewish people. For those who live before us. And for those who will share us with us. Please stand as Elie and Talia recite the Kalmali Rahamin. God, full of mercy, who dwells in the heights, provide us for a rest upon the divine presences, wings within the range of the holy and pure, whose shining resemble the skies of all the souls of the six million Jews, victims of the European Holocaust, who were murdered, slaughtered, burned, exterminated, for the sanctification of the name. 
by the German Nazis assassins with the help of the people. And therefore, the Master of Mercy will protect them forever behind the hiding of the wings, and they will tie their souls with the rope of life. The everlasting is their heritage. The Garden of Eden shall be their resting place, and they shall rest peacefully upon their lying place. They will stand for their fate in the end of the days, and let them say, Amen. As we conclude all programs at Yeshiva Nam and how appropriate for what we're, we heard and spoke about today, we are going to conclude with the singing of Hatikva. Oh, 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 oh